Hello and welcome to The Banker. I'm Danielle Miles, Investment Banking and Capital Markets Editor, and I'm here today with Scott Eaton, COO of Market Access Europe, which is one of the world's biggest electronic trading platforms for bonds and other credit products. Scott, thank you very much for joining me today. Thank you for having me. We're obviously here to talk about uh, electronic trading or e-trading as it's otherwise known, which is an alternative to the uh, traditional voice trading system, which is used by uh, many bank dealers still. So obviously there's been a large number of e-trading platforms which have sprung up around the world in recent years, but they all operate in slightly different ways. They all have sort of slightly different trading protocols. Can you tell me how buyers and sellers are brought together on market access? Sure, sure I can. Thank you um, for having me again. Um, I like to think of ourselves as kind of a startup, although we're not. We're 16 years old. Um, and we brought together a community of over 1,100 buy side and sell side participants. And that community really comes together under our flagship protocol, which is an RFQ protocol, which really just replicates what trading was like when I was trading. So a client would pick up the phone, call a dealer or a salesman, ask for a price, and then transact. And so what we do with the RFQ process is merely replicate that electronically and make it more efficient so that client can reach out to as many dealers as he wants to, to inquire about the price. What's really exciting now is the change in protocols. So we've introduced something called open trading. We introduced it about 18 months ago in Europe, um, probably three years ago in the US, and that's a protocol which allows all participants to trade anonymously with each other. Mm -hmm. And that really allows those participants to find liquidity where it naturally resides. And so that perfectly leads into my next question, actually. So talking about where that liquidity is now, there's a lot of talk about uh, sort of buy side acting as uh, price makers. Uh, and obviously a lot of that stems from the fact that regulations make it uh, much more expensive for uh, bank dealers to play the traditional market making role. To what extent are you seeing buy side firms uh, making prices and playing that traditional uh, bank role? Well, it's interesting, we're, we're seeing a lot of it. And it's not really playing the traditional bank role in the, in the same way that the dealers do both in the old days and now, where they make prices, make two-way prices, make markets. But we are seeing an increase in the buy side, the long only money, make prices. So by our reckoning, we see about a third of the prices on our open trading protocol come from dealers, about a third by alternative liquidity providers, and a third coming from traditional long only money. Um, and what's enabling that is the use of data. Mm -hmm. And in fact, as you alluded to, also the pressures from capital changes and market structure changes. But the data that we provide also helps that and facilitates that quite a bit. Can we talk a little more about data? So obviously in the US there's Trace, mm -hmm. which sort of consolidates uh, post-trade uh, reporting. Uh, and obviously in Europe we have MIFID II coming in, which I guess will require something similar. How important is data like that and analysis of it uh, in terms of the future of e-trading? I, th I think it's hugely important. So um, we have a product called Access All, which is part of uh, the data that we capture from Tracks, which is the post-trade business that Market Access has. And that's for us, is the closest thing to a, a trade tape in Europe. Mm -hmm. So we use that, and that helps people um, capture some element of price formation information. So it facilitates that buy side trader uh, in making a price. In terms of how it really impacts e-trading, I think it's gonna, it's gonna be very important because in fact, in addition to things like Access All, which, which will replicate the trade tape and then ultimately the role of APAs under MIFID, um, we see it also uh, in things like TCA, trade cost analysis, and we have, a, we have a product there which enables participants to look at their trades, benchmark how they've done, best execution, and all of that, of course, is facilitated by trading on an electronic platform because it means that you capture the information, both you know where you transacted, but also where the prices were around where you transacted. Okay, so it can be sort of quite revolutionary, I guess, going forward. Yeah. yeah. Uh, can we talk a little about the U.S. versus European comparison? Um, something which certainly surprised me was that a much bigger proportion of uh, corporate bond trading in Europe happens online as compared, sorry, not online, electronically mm. as compared to the U.S. Uh, what is behind that? Okay, so my thought about that is that it really comes down to simple thing, that Europe is a collection of countries, right, and a collection of languages. And when I used to trade years ago and I'd pick up the phone and I'd call somebody in Italy or in Sweden, um, it was hard to communicate. Now, part of that might be me being an American speaking no languages, um, but part of it, I think, is just the communication. So in Europe, you see culturally a lot of people 
making it, it's just easier to trade electronically. Um, also different, different behaviors. And in the U.S., of course, it's, it's uh, homogeneous in terms of language, culture, and trading protocol. So I suspect that that's part of it. Thank you very much for your time, Scott. You're welcome. Thank you for having me.